Howdy everybody, Argon Matrix here. Welcome to episode 116 of The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. We are going to go ahead and try an Eden run today to Delirium. This is one of the few characters that we actually still have to do Delirium with. We also have Blue Baby, uh, and then I think Apollyon, oh, Lost obviously, Apollyon has to do Mega Satan in Greed Mode. Otherwise, uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and try and knock this one out of the park. Hopefully, uh, fate will be kind to us today. Oh, uh, well, this is interesting at the very least, starting right next to a troll bomb. I don't know how uh, well that bodes for us. E06W, 7GAA. 7GA. That's how I feel right now, man. GA. Let's just go ahead and use this. So, okay. Uh, so, we start, we've started with Restock and Glass Cannon. Obviously, Glass Cannon is not super good, um, because... It's 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 very bad. It's quite it's good. <laughs> it's not good because it's very bad. That's uh, the most sound logic I've ever heard myself. Uh, we also have little Loki now, which is uh, not the worst familiar in the world, but not a plus. Still, he might help out some of some in the early game here for sure. So I'm definitely, by the way, hairstyle on point as usual. So I'm definitely not going to be using glass cannon, probably at all. Unless I have a very good reason to use it. Like, if I if I just get down to half a heart naturally, then I guess I can use a glass cannon at that point, because why not? There's nothing to lose, right? But until such a point, and I really hope that that, doesn't, uh, that case doesn't present itself anytime soon, or at all, really. We're just going to go ahead and rely on our own damage, which is actually fairly solid right off the bat here. We've got uh, three slightly higher than base damage, base starting damage for Isaac, and I think, like... Pretty a pretty good base tier rate. Nine, I think, is pretty much average. And restock is a it's an understated sort of goodness. It it could be good or it could be like pretty bad for us. Well not pretty bad, like it's gonna be good no matter what, realistically. But how good it is depends on how much money we can find on this run. Off to a good start, I guess. We got one penny already. Alright, hopefully this is worth the risk. We got AWAS, okay. Might be worth the risk, who knows. I mean, AWAS can always help us, like, get uh, get through some floors faster if we really need it to. Which we might need to on this run because we're trying to go for Delirium. So, obviously, time is of the essence in some regard. But for right now, let's just focus on the here and now. That's the thing about going fast. I don't think you really necessarily need to go that fast right off the bat because... If you're expecting to be like going like super duper fast by like the second or third floor even, I think you're setting your expectations a little too high because like what are the odds that you're gonna get the items that you need to go that fast that early on? It can happen, don't get me wrong, you can easily find something like Mom's Knife or Epic Fetish or something in your first item room. That is, that's undisputable, undisputable fact written in the code of Isaac, literally. <laughs> the ninth commandment of Isaac. Thou shalt not uh, rescind Epic Fetus if it's granted to you upon your first item room encounter. I don't know what I'm saying, though. Yeah, but if you expect that like on every single run, which I don't think anyone realistically does, but sometimes you kind of want to, uh, then you're setting yourself up for disappointment, honestly. You can make do with uh, with basically what, like, what we have now, just base sort of damage, until... I'm going to take the Empress, actually. Until, like, probably, like, the fourth or fifth floor. And by that point, if you haven't gotten anything, then you're going to start to feel... Then you're going to start to feel the burn, for sure. But until such a time, I think we'll be, uh, be okay. And that comes right back around to trying to go fast through a run. Like, obviously, in the first couple floors, you're not going to be uh, going that fast, because you're not going to be that strong. But once you start to pick up momentum in the later floors, that's when you need to realize, like, okay, should I be going faster than I actually am right now? And if the answer is uh, yes, then you need to pick up the pace, maybe. Like, maybe you have good enough items that you don't have to go out of your way to explore every floor and find every item room. Maybe you can just sort of try and go for the win if you're trying to just go for a hush win or something. You gotta be able to judge your run, and that's admittedly something I'm pretty bad at, personally is trying to, like, judge a run at face value. Like, like I'm always like, oh, this is a good run, but it could be better if I get a really nice item in the item room. And while that's technically true, you have to realize, like, when you're good enough to win so that, so that, uh, 
you don't have to spend too much needless time going out of your way to find items. Okay, I'll take this and then we'll reroll glass can. And sprinkler is one of the new items that was added in the booster pack, the first booster pack. I guess the second one should be coming out fairly soon. They're coming out monthly, so look forward to that, I guess. Uh, the sprinkler I haven't gotten to use, like, ever. I think this is, like, my first time ever encountering it in a video or at all, quite frankly. Basically what it does is you can set it down. I'm probably going to save it to... I'm probably going to show it off in the boss fight. Because I know what it does, despite not having gotten it before. I've seen it, like, in other videos and stuff. Uh, you, you set it down and it sort of just, like, fires tears in a sort of clockwork pattern, like a like it just rotates around firing tears in eight different directions. I think it's eight different directions anyway. And it's pretty cool, because it is also modified by your tier effects, so if you have a brimstone laser, it'll be firing little brimstone lasers. If you have, like, a mom's knife, it'll be shooting knives at everywhere. And the higher that your tier rate is, the, uh, the faster it'll fire at those tiers as well. It is affected by that. I don't know if there's any sort of modifiers that the uh, sprinkler gets, like positive or negative modifiers, or if it's just straight up your base damage tiers, base fire rate, and all that. I guess we'll try and uh, try and judge that when we're using our boss here. Speaking of which, our boss is Monstro. All right, so we'll go ahead and set that down in the middle-ish. I don't know. I feel like it's firing at a little bit of a heightened rate. It's going pretty fast in that circle there. I don't know. It's a cool item, don't get me wrong, and I, I could see definitely some potential for it to be used on like a, on greed mode or boss rush or something like that, where you can get multiple charges per room. That's a pretty sweet option. Horror Babylon is also a pretty sweet option, especially because we're at full spirit hearts now. That was the one spot where our, uh, where our Eden Run actually kind of was lacking off the start was HP, but thanks to PJs, we don't have to worry about that so much. Talk about living in the past, though. That happened, like, what, two floors ago now? Come on, man. Get your head in the game. So I don't know if uh, if it's necessary to, to, like, save Sprinkler for boss fights. I think it's a, uh, it's a, it's, like, not a good enough item to save strictly for boss fights, if you get what I'm saying. Not to say that it's a bad item by any means. Far from it. I think it's actually pretty cool. But the fact that it's only four charges and the fact that it does what it does here does doesn't mean that I feel obligated, you know, to save a charge specifically for the boss fights. Okay, this is interesting. I want both of these, actually, but it would be very risky to take both of them. I mean, there is a way to do it, I'm pretty sure. There, I mean, there definitely is a way to do it. I guess we'll give it a shot, because live on the edge, man. Go for broke. So we'll take Dark Bum, and then we take the Mark, which will give us a Spirit Heart. So we're operating on one spirit heart right now, which makes me a little more wary about... Oh, okay, well, that helps, I guess. I can see forever. Makes me a little more wary about fighting the rest of that room, and also about this room just in general, because these guys can do, like, a full heart of damage, I'm pretty sure. Just don't get exploded upon, and we'll be fine. So the HP upgrade that we got from that pill was pretty clutch. We still have to find a red heart to actually fill it. But it also does uh, present sort of an, I don't know, it's like a double-edged sword type thing. Because if we fill up that red heart, then we'll lose the damage bonus from Horror Babylon. Unless we only fill it up with half of a red heart, which is what I would ideally want to do, I guess. And then just save the rest of our uh, of the red hearts that we find for Dark Bum or something. Good stuff. Improved deal with the devil odds. Never hurt anybody. But until we can find some form of a uh, red heart or more spirit hearts or something, we gotta be very careful with how we approach this run. Now we really are on glass cannon territory. Funny, because we gave it that item on the last floor. Really, just like a single half red heart that makes not, not a world of difference, but it would make me feel a little more comfortable, you know? But hey, I'll play it by the game's rules if they really want me to. That room is a little bit of a bitch, especially because it's the one right next to our item room, so it's going to be kind of tough. What we got here, we got I found pills, which is literally worthless. All right, how do I want to tackle this? It's such a nasty room, dude. Okay. There we go, we got it. Uh, we got Golden Teleporter slash Teleport 2.0, I guess. It's a fun item, but I think we need to give the Sprinkler a, a chance to shine. 
It's one of the new items to the game. Teleport 2.0 is like, it's nifty, but it, requ it also requires like a lot of brain work. And that's probably like the worst possible excuse for not using an item like ever. But I just don't have the mental fortitude right now to want to use uh, Teleport 2.0. There are certain runs where Teleport 2.0 can be amazing. And I'm sure this could become one of them. I think you can transform just about any run into a Teleport 2.0 sort of run. But I'm just not feeling it today, you know? Got full health there, which is not actually that great, but it's okay. Got luck down, which is pretty bad. And then we'll just take a Lemon Party into the boss, I guess. Ooh, yeah. We got Big Horn. Yeah, I get Lemon Partied on, honestly. And also sprinkled. Because why the hell not? Oh yeah, he spawned right in the lemon party. Good shit. That's a pretty hard nerf, or a hard counter. Not hard nerf. I don't know where that came from. Yeah, apparently lemon party is a very hard counter to, uh... It's a big horn there. We got the pentagram, which is pretty solid. Our damage is doing very well, even with that horror battle on active right now, so... Still, we would like to get it active if we could, so, uh... A temperance machine or a deal with the devil at some point in the near future would be quite welcome. That's also very good. See, now, like, I have to sort of put my money where my mouth is, right? Teleport 2.0 was a good item that we didn't take because they didn't want to have the mental fortitude, and I also want to give Sprinkler a shot. Now Guppy's head is a very good item that does not require that much uh, thought to use, obviously. But it's not as cool as the Sprinkler. Like, ooh, boy, we get attack flies every room. It's like, it's good. But, the sprinkler has that sort of novelty factor to it, you know? So I might still stick with the sprinkler, because how many runs have we had Guppy's head on, realistically? I'll use it at the end of this room, just uh, to get more attack flies for the road. And hey, you know, it's not all, like, bad or anything, obviously. Guppy's head uh, contributes towards the Guppy transformation, so... We're on the road to that, and the Guppy transformation is usually... Uh, pretty close to an instant win. Go ahead and do that. Dark Bomb gives an attack spider as well, so that's pretty sweet. Uh, then we'll try and check out this secret room. Actually, I have enough money to make the shop worthwhile for sure, and we have a restock as well, so... Want to use that. I think I'll save a bomb. I was considering maybe bombing into that treasure room there, but we have enough keys that I don't feel that that's... Maybe the smartest idea, you know. Thank you, Dark Bum. Grab that as well. Maybe not the smartest idea with Horror Babylon, but it's done now, baby. We are what we are, and I trust that at some point I'll be able to trade this HP away for a deal with the devil. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but someday. We actually had sort of a, the best case scenario on the previous floor, because we didn't get a deal with the devil after the boss fight to trigger which means that we have a 77 or whatever percent chance now. But we still got the deal with the devil on the previous floor thanks to the red chest. That's always what you want, want to kind of strive for. Ooh, money equals power. See, now I have an incentive to not go to the shop, but I think it's still probably worth it to check out the shop at the very least, because if there's an item that's good enough in there, it might be worth giving up some damage from, mo from money equals power. We're liable to get that damage back anyway, so couldn't hurt. Go ahead and use the Hermit now, just take us right to the shop. Oh, it's Greed. Well, that's fine then. Saves me from having to make a make a decision, really. And if he drops Steam Sale, Steam Sale and Resock is a very nice combination, yeah. So the next time we actually get a shop that's worth something, we'll be able to, uh, to make it really worth something, you know? We'll be able to make hay while the sun shines for sure. Drop a Red Heart. Drop a Red Heart! He didn't drop a red heart. Not a big deal. I just wanted more fodder for Dark Bum, I guess. Ace of clubs. Ace of clubs! Sack of sacks! Then never mind. I ain't no song parody genius. Like some Canadians I know. I'm looking at you, Avril Lavigne. Weird Al Yankovic. I'm pretty sure Weird Al is not Canadian. There are a lot of celebrities that it might surprise you to know are Canadian, though. Uh, I mean, I'm sure most people know which ones are, like, the most famous ones, like Jim Carrey and, uh, Avril Lavigne. I don't know if Avril Lavigne's, like, the most famous, but she's famous. 
I don't know. I like I said, like I've said in the past, I'm not super up on my uh, my Hollywood star rankings. So I don't. So like, it's funny for me to say like, oh, most people probably don't know what celebrities are Canadian when realistically, I don't really know what celebrities are Canadian most of the time. Thanks, Krampus. Really appreciate that. So hopefully we'll get a lump of coal here, because like I said, I don't feel like giving up the sprinkler. I feel like uh, I feel like it's actually doing some pretty nice stuff for us today. It's like I'm never disappointed when I use the sprinkler. That's kind of the gist I'm getting out of it right now. Take Wheel of Fortune and move on down. Now, obviously, the sprinkler's not like the best spacebar item in the entire game or anything like that. I think it. I think it like if it's. I think it has the exact right charge. I think it's a very well balanced spacebar item, because I think if it had like, uh, like two or even three charges, I think it could be a little too powerful if you get the uh, right combination of tier effects. But at four charges, I think it's just right on the precipice. You know, being like, not so, like not so high charge that it's. Worth, that it's like worthless to use, but not so low charge that like you can just abuse it. So it's pretty solid in that regard. Wow, we found the boss already. It's actually pretty solid. Uh, I would like to go out of my way to find the shop and stuff though, and also just to get sprinkler charged up for the boss shop and the item room, I guess. Because even if the shop like has a super read on it here. I want to get that out of the way so that our next shop doesn't have super greed on it so that I can actually buy something out of our next shop. I have no idea what our HP is at, by the way, so I'm just going to go on faith. Uh, we did have that eternal heart on the previous floor, so I know we have two red hearts. I don't know what our spirit heart situation is, though. I think we're pretty good, though. That's nice. Item room right out the bat here. We're getting pretty lucky on this floor. Oh, God. Oh, we got Tech Point 5. I don't know if Tech Point 5 is actually going to synergize with the sprinkler at all. It would be very cool if it did. So I know most tier effects are accounted for. Um, it does not seem to be, though. Okay, that's fine. I know, like, regular technology is accounted for by the sprinkler. Because that, that one actually transforms your tiers directly. Whereas this one, I guess, is not actually a tier transformation. It's just a little added bonus, you know? A little plus one for our tier action. Is that a phrase or a term people really use, like, in actual life? Plus one? Like, oh, I, I got invited and I and I can, I can bring a plus one to the party. It's like, can't you just say a guest or a date or whatever, whatever suits the moment? A plus one just sounds like... It sounds like you don't want to commit to whatever it is, you know? And I feel like you're writing an invitation to a party, and it's like you write, Oh, you can bring a plus one. Then that, like, insinuates to me what kind of a person you are. It's not necessarily a bad person, it's just a, maybe more of a judgmental person than I might want to associate with at times. Does that make me a little bit too judgmental? I mean, uh, who's counting? Okay, so we'll take, uh, take this. The smelter for three cents is a very tempting option. Don't get me wrong. But we haven't come across many trinkets on this run anyway, so I'm not going to be sweating it too much here. Um, what do I want to do? I actually think I'm going to donate some. I know this is kind of messing with our money equals power situation. We're losing 0 .04 damage every time, but I just kind of wanted to get that out of the way for this run because I felt like it was just going to break soon anyway. Let's go ahead and I guess we'll I guess we'll buy the trinket smelter just to sort of get it out of the system here because we'll, we'll have re we have restock, so we might as well use these. The sun is very good. I'll save that for the next floor. Remote detonator gives us five bombs, spider mod, and then we have ladder. And then humbling bundle would be great, but I don't have the money for it anymore. Oh, well, that would have been nice to know. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I guess just use two diamonds and then take the sun with you. It's not the most optimal play, I know, but hey, don't, don't take a remote detonator with you. What are you doing? You freaking weirdo. Yeah, big ol' hoser. What you doing taking remote detonator with you? Don't you know that there's a sprinkler in the other room? Holy guacamole. <laughs> when did I get so Canadian? Look at my beautiful face, by the way. Like, mmm. Uh goo. <laughs> the tiny little smile is what does it for me. 
All right, so we're probably going to miss out on the boss rush opportunity here by the looks of things, but that's uh, that's fine because that's not what we're really going for on this run. What we're going for is the hush fight, and we're still well on pace to make that happen, so thank goodness for that. Mom's heals is fine. Uh, okay, there's a Dark Princess crown, which makes it so that you get a stat upgrade, like sort of an all stats upgrade, except it doesn't upgrade damage, I think, which is pretty bad. Uh, when you have exactly one red heart, you can have spirit hearts as well, but you can't have any more than more or less than one red heart. So it's not super good in our current circumstance. I'll take Headless Baby, and I'll take Dark Prince's Crown just to like kind of have it in case we in case we are able to make it work. But I think having Horror Babylon active is going to be more relevant to our success. We right, got Curse of Darkness. No big deal. Uh, check this out. Oh, thank God for that. We got Dead Cat! Ooh. That's our second Guppy item, and it also does activate Dark Prince's Crown for all that's worth. Yeah, I can see it was a Tears upgrade and a Shot Speed upgrade. Maybe a Range and Speed upgrade, but no damage. So, I mean, the Tears upgrade is appreciated at the very least, but... One of the one of the worst sort of all-set upgrades, which is unfortunate because it actually has some pretty specific conditions in order to make it work. I forgot to use the Sun card, by the way. I should have used that, like, right off the bat here, but... No skin off my nose, really. So this run is looking quite powerful so far, but we gotta keep in mind that we're trying to do delirium on this fight, on this run. So powerful, like like a basic level of powerful, might be good enough to just beat the game regularly to get through and defeat Blue Baby or whatever. But to get through delirium, it's not gonna be quite up to snuff. So we've got to really uh, swing for the fences on this run. You know, push it to the limit. See how far we can take this. Uh, that was a dumb thing to do. I placed the bomb there because I didn't... I forgot. Never mind. I'm going to go ahead and take Hive Mind in case we get the Guppy Transformation. Red Candle is not very good. because I. Well, I mean, it is good, but I just don't want to give it up for the Sprinkler. Or give the Sprinkler up for it, I should say. And we'll take Tarot Cloth. And we'll be uh, on our way. What do we get with Tarot Cloth as well? We got the Hanged Man, which has no effect with Tarot Cloth. But that's okay. Head briefly off to the side to get our item room, just because I know exactly where it is, and I would be kicking myself if I didn't. But again, this might be one of those situations where it's like, you gotta judge the run as it comes. Are we powerful enough to have left without Iron Bar here? Who knows, man. Iron Bar's a pretty good upgrade. The other one, I think was Linger Bean. I was I didn't even pay that much attention to it. I just saw the shape of the bean and I was like, mm, no thanks. It was either Linger, be Linger Bean or Giga Fart, neither of which are uh, pertinent to my interests. Neither of them occlude Iron Bar, I should say. Good shit, good shit. And okay, now we got like a weird sort of situation because I, I don't know which I'd rather have active, honestly. Like, do I get more DPS outright out of having Dark Prince's Crown active with the Tears upgrade, or with having Horror Babylon active with the straight-up damage upgrade? I'm honestly not too sure on that front. Uh, we already got Dead Cat out of that, that's right. Let's head on down. Come on down, you're the next contestant on the Scarred Womb one. It was not a very popular game show. Uh, I think it had to maybe do with the title of it. Yeah. Prizes weren't that great either. It's like, ooh, yeah, you win, you get to eat the placenta. <laughs> Some gross commentary today, apparently. Which, I mean, should be fitting. It should be expected with this sort of a game, I suppose. Got two clubs, which is really like four times the bombs, thanks to Tarot Cloth, so that's pretty sweet. And don't forget about Hanged Man either. I have this bad sort of tendency to forget that Hanged Man exists. And I'll be like, ooh, I wish I could get that item across the way there, but I have no way to get to it. I don't, because I don't have flight. Oh well, next floor. It's like, no, man, pay attention. Use the uh, tools at your disposal to good effect. Ow, that was just rude. <laughs> I was trying to beat the clock on that red poop, and they, maybe that was my fault. I suppose you could make that argument, but... Oh, well. 
Okay, there's a tinted rock there, as well as this golden chest. Makes it very worthwhile. Uh, yeah, sack of pennies. That's totally fine, actually. Because of uh, money equals power. Gonna be getting some nice bonuses from that. Mm, bloody penny is absolutely worth taking. That in combination with, uh, with sack of pennies is actually pretty good in terms of our dark bum play and stuff. So we get all sorts of half red hearts across the board here. Even with just like random penny drops as well now. Very interesting sort of, uh, sort of strength to our run. Weird sort of utility. But I'm happy with it, man. I'm happy with the decisions I've made so far. Fuck it, let's just do this. Probably not gonna end up using Hangman in any better sort of circumstance anyway. Haven't been this way yet, so let's check it out. Man, I hate Curse of the Lost so much. Like, it's, it's such an inconvenience, and, like, many of the other curses are, like, actually, like, detrimental to your success. This one's just more of an inconvenience, and that should mean that it's, like, not as bad as some of the other curses. And from an objective st standpoint, it's not. It's, like, it's not, it's not worse than Curse of the Blind or Curse of the Unknown or whatever. Objectively, those, I feel, are worse. But goddamn, if I don't get annoyed at not being able to see my map, especially when I just get lost, and then it's like, oh god, where do I go, what do I do? It's just a bad time, man. Maybe that stems from me wanting to, wanting to be like a very orderly person and know sort of what's going on at all times. You know, there's a place for everything, and everything is in its place. Oh god, that brings back some memories. That's a line from the uh, from the sweet life of Zack and Cody. Anyone watch that show? I'm sure there are people out there watching right now who watch that show. Cause I know I did, and I was a, uh, I was in the exact perfect age demographic for that show. I'm pretty sure, and I think I catered to that exact age demographic as well. So, you would think. Did he get- did Dark Bum give me half of a spirit heart there? I couldn't quite tell, because my body was in the way. As it so often is, you know, I'm just such a large specimen of a man. My body frequently gets in the way. Mm, yes, baby. I think he actually did give me half of a spirit heart there, though. Don't quote me on it, but it seems like that might be the case. In which case, maybe it was not the greatest idea to unlock half of a spirit heart. I, th I mean, I think the positives outweigh the negatives on that one, but still a bit of a bummer that Dark Bomb can actually give you that. I'm starting to wish I'd taken Trinket Smelter, man. Gotten a couple trinkets that might be might have been worth taking in the past couple floors here. I mean, really, only three, and one of them was Hookworm, so it's that e that's debatable. Mm, is, ho is Hookworm worth taking? Mm, that depends. Are you a masochist? gotten here. Okay. By the way, I haven't even discussed, like, really one of the, uh, one of the main sort of talking points you would expect with this run. Nine lives. Like, that's, like, a very strong, very strong item, honestly. Like, it puts us in a very nice spot, because even if we can't make this life work, like, if we somehow, uh, kick the bucket on Delirium, or before that, we have eight extra lives to sort of make it work out. Well, really nine lives, I don't know. I, I don't know the math on that one. I think it's nine. It, it's called nine lives. Well, whatever. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, if you lose on your strongest life, then the odds of you winning on a weaker life where you only have one hit to live... Not quite so high. But, you know, the fact is the opportunity is there. And that's what I'm really banking on. Alright, so is this, uh, this is the Scar Womb too. That's right, i just not going crazy. Go ahead and put the Sprinkler down there. Maybe should have saved it for the Hush Fight, who knows, but that's okay. I might just go back for a battery charge, honestly, we got time. We are very powerful on this run, admittedly. We've got some pretty, uh, pretty solid, nothing like game-busting or anything. No game-busting items, but... Very just powerful items, especially when put in conjunction with one another, like, you know, rubber cement and, uh, lump of coal. I will take that, mostly just get to, into Horror Babylon State, because I feel like that's going to be better for me than, um, 
than the Dark Prince's crown upgrade, just on the whole. Although that tears downgrade is a little bit, uh, I can feel the sting a little bit. Alright, let's go ahead and move on down to the Hush fight, see what we can make happen here. Yeah, like, none of these items on their own are, uh, are that good. I mean, they're good, just not, like, a uh, run wing on their own, but they've come together in a very nice form here. So, Rune Bag is very awesome. Gonna take all this. Make sure to keep some money just for money equals power's sake. So, don't spend it all in one place, you know? Ooh! This is actually kind of a tough one. I'm gonna come back to that. Um... This one is not that tough, just because uh, one of them is a spacebar item. Good spacebar item, and Evil Eye is debatably not very good passive, but it's fine. I wonder if it'll interact with the sprinkler at all. I guess we'll find out. Oh god. Okay, are either of these worth it? I would say probably not worth giving up the damage to take any of that. Uh, I will get up to full HP, though. That much I can do. Now... Do you take the quarter for the big old damage upgrade? Can I get back in the room, please? Or do you take a cone head? I mean, it won't give us a spirit heart now, but it has other benefits that are pretty nice. I think I'd rather just take the quarter, though. Feels like the safer option to me, I don't know. 0.8 damage upgrade. Nothing to sneeze at. Let's go ahead and uh, go fight Hush, I suppose. Let's do or die, man. All right, set this like right in the middle here. And we'll see, maybe, we might not be able to notice if Evil Eye interacts with it or not, but I'm hoping that it does. I think it'd be pretty cool. And the Hush is such a big target that I think the Sprinkler is going to be, uh, it's going to be pretty valuable in this fight. Unfortunately, we don't have, like, Charge Baby or anything. There's no way of us re really regaining charges in the middle of the fight here. So, we're stuck with the one Sprinkler, but... You know, there, there will come a point where the Hush moves on top of the Sprinkler. And then I guess, hopefully, hopefully it'll work this way that all eight shots from the Sprinkler will hit the Hush if it's if he's just sitting on top of it. That makes sense to me. Hopefully, like, the Sprinkler can't be killed by being run over by the Hush. That would be a little annoying. Uh, I don't think that's how it works, though. I'm pretty sure the Sprinkler is sort of immaterial. We're about to find out, though, because he's going to go down on it. Oh, yeah, go down on that sprinkler hush, baby. Oh, look at that. I don't know if they're hitting him or not. <laughs> it looks like some of them are still going, like, out of the way. But I think it's doing better than not having it there. There's that YouTube notification in the corner again. really got to disable that. Like, it's not like I even have YouTube open right now. It's just, like, the desktop notifications just are active regardless, I guess. Like, I like having them just on uh, in my own time to be able to keep up with all that stuff. See comments as they come in and stuff. But in the middle of recording, it can be a little bit distracting. God, guys, can't you just know when I'm recording and then not comment during those hours? Good lord. It's hard to find good help these days, man. Am I right? You, the people I'm directly complaining about? I'm not complaining about you guys. Don't get it don't, don't get it twisted, please. So we're coming up on the end of April here. Uh, pretty soon. I mean, when this video comes out, it'll be basically the end of April. You guys get any interesting summer plans coming up? I don't know. I always, like, want to do things during the summer. And this summer might be the one where I actually end up actually doing things, because it's the one summer where I've, like, I made some, a pretty decent supply of new friends over this past year. New IRL friends, even, because most, most of the friends in the past have been online. Not to say they've been bad friends, obviously. They're some of the nicest people I've ever met online here. But it's hard to, like, hang out with them during the summer. So, I don't know. We might do some sort of road trips or uh, things like that during the summer. Of course, if I want to do anything like that, I'm going to have to be very well stocked for videos ahead of time here. My backlog is going to have to be enormous if I want to uh, keep up this daily video thing. Because even if I'm away for a week, that's like seven videos i got to record ahead of time, which is kind of a lot, especially because uh, summer at work is 
probably some of our busiest times. Summer, like the middle of summer and around Christmas, because I work at a liquor store, so obviously. But that's still a little ways ahead. Still gotta get through May, man, and May long weekend. I swear to God, every single May long weekend in Alberta, it fucking snows or rains or does something terrible that just ruins everyone's time. It just never just it never just wants to be a nice long weekend with lots of sun and sun and surf. I mean, sun and surf is not a it's an expression. It's just not one that's really pertinent to Alberta. My God. What is happening out there? There's a big old truck, I guess, just honking at me. What, you don't like Isaac, Mr. Trucker? I know, I know, I don't want to have to fight Delirium either, but you gotta do what you gotta do, man. Going for that a million percent for the second time in my life. Alright, so we're in a pretty solid spot here. We didn't lose too much, uh, too much HP or anything on that Delirium fight, or on the Hush fight. In fact, we gained it back right away here as well. We don't have any mapping just yet for the uh, for the void here, but that could come in the form of an Ansu's rune at some point along the line here. Plus, we also have a teleport card, so if we happen to stumble into the delirium fight, we can just warp on out of there. And uh, okay, this could be the delirium fight right now, honestly. Hopefully, it's not. I mean, kind I kind of hope that it is, honestly, just so I know that it won't be stressing me out this entire time, and I can sort of get rid of the moon. Let's see here. We got Delirium. Okay, well, that answers that question. Good to know. Uh, blow this guy up, I guess. Maybe get some more money out of it. Nope, just spiders. Don't you hate that, man, when you go to withdraw money from the bank and they just give you a handful of spiders instead? <laughs> it's like, is that even ethical or legal? Something tells me no. Let's make sure we remember which boss room Delirium actually is. Alright. We got Ansu's here, which is very, very nice. Two bosses right north of us. I swear, man. Some people have luck in different forms. Some people have luck with, like, they go to the casino, they win it big. Or, not win it big, but they win frequently, you know. Some people have luck, like, uh... Like, I don't know, they win every coin toss that they have, or they're really good at rock, paper, scissors, or something. My luck apparently comes in the form of, when I get Rune Bag, I always get the Ansu's Rune that I need, like, immediately. Obviously, like, I got an Alge's Rune there first, but the second one I got was Ansu's, and it's on the f exact floor that I really needed it for, so that's kind of funny. Like, I feel like every time I ask for that Ansu's Rune, I just get it, like, immediately. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just the fact that there aren't that many runes in the game, so that it's it's easy enough to like to make a sort of judgment call there, sort of an arbitrary case. Anecdotal evidence and all that, but it just feels right, man, like every time. We got the compass as well, which is, I mean, not that valuable now, but it's a it's a nice thought anyway. Um we have a lot of boss fights on this. Is this 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 feels like more boss fights than normal for the void? Is that just me conflating things here? I don't know. At the very least, we know which one is Delirium, so we can fight all the others without having to worry. By the way, I'm probably not going to take any more pills on this run, just because I've I've been burned a couple times in the past by taking um by getting an Ansu's rune that I needed, and it's like, oh yeah, and then it's just like, take a random pill, and it's like, amnesia, and it's like, well, fuck. That all went to waste immediately. And I really, I've, I've gotten sick of that. I've kind of, I'm kind of over pills in this game, honestly. Like, unless I have some reason to want to shoot for the moon or something, like, I know that the pills are gonna be good, or, or at least know what the pills are. Uh, chaos, okay. That can make things interesting here. Then, like, like if I know what the pills are, if I have PhD or Virgo or something, then, yeah, I'm fine taking them, but when they're just, like, random-ass pills and I'm in a sort of precarious situation, it, I should probably just, like, not take pills. Maybe that's a hard lesson that I've just had to learn so many times here. Dagoz is whatever. Probably could have saved it, but that's okay. There's enough spear hearts on the ground anyway that I'm not going to have to worry about it too much. 
Good shit, we got Infamy. I actually don't know if the uh, Chaos pickup on the previous boss fight really matters that much. Because I think, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I think the items that you get from the bosses on the Void are sort of affected by Chaos naturally anyway. Because I've seen some like weird items spawn on these boss after these boss fights. It's like, it feels like anything goes on these boss fights, so... I think that Chaos is already in effect, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this opens up some new possibilities for us. Regardless, I don't feel like I'm going to notice all that much, even if it does open up new possibilities. I don't really know what I'm saving this Yara rune for, by the way. I guess maybe for, uh... You know what? You Let's do this. Let's do Yara Burkano. Because why the hell not? Oh god, I forgot that we had a uh, tarot cloth, so we actually got four Burkano runes and four spirit arts there. But Burkano's pretty sweet, honestly, with um, with hive mind in effect as well. I maybe I should have saved all that, honestly, for right before the delirium fight or something, but that's okay. Not gonna be the end of the world either way. Got conquest. Conquest is now dead. Uh, there's the bean. Not gonna worry super much about that. Not gonna worry super much about that. Didn't I just say in a previous video that I don't like using the word super? Where'd that come from, man? So Algis is actually phenomenal, by the way, because I, like, I, I've had it, I had an Algis wound, Algis wound, <laughs> had an Algis rune waiting on one of the rooms previous to this that I was going to pick up before the Delirium fight, or that I intended to pick up for the, before the Delirium fight anyway. But now remembering that I have Tarot Cloth, that opens up a whole new fucking world, man. Algis, because it's going to have double the length, and Algis' normal length is already very, very good. So it's like, it might just subsist through the entire Delirium fight. I don't know, it depends on how much damage we can do to Delirium while we have it active, which we should be able to do a lot, especially with Cuban Meat and now Mom's Razor on our side. So we can do some pretty hefty orbital damage. If one of these bosses could like give me Polydactyly or, um, or Starter Deck or something, then I'd be just fucking over the moon, because then I could take two Alge's runes into the into the boss fight, which would be pretty crazy. Also, I totally didn't even think about it, but every time I used the Burkana rune, like the four Burkana runes I used earlier, I got like twice the effect of them. So it was really like eight Burkana runes, which is just... oh man, ta why is Tarot Cloth so good? It's so good. It's not even fair half the time. This is, like, one of the most powerful Delirium runs I think I've ever had. Like, uh, maybe not ever. Like, I, like we fought Delirium a decent amount through this uh, playthrough that I don't remember every single fight against them. But this feels very, very strong. I don't know if we're gonna, like, necessarily just corrode him immediately. I don't feel like that's the way this is going, but at the same time... I feel like it could go that way with just one tip in the right direction. So we got Yara here, again. Uh... Don't know what I would want that for necessarily. Just gonna go ahead and take Alges just so I don't forget it when I go into the Delirium fight or something dumb like that. Give me small rock, man. Aw, oh, damn it. That's okay. No big deal. Honestly, maybe use a uh, Yara in that room that we were just in with the two cents and bombs and stuff in there just to get like a bunch of more money for uh, money equals power. Couldn't hurt, I suppose. Don't know what uh, Dark Room dropped there. I guess it was probably an attack spider. Okay. Got the Necronomicon, which is not going to facilitate Bookworm, because I think it's actually just the first book that we've gotten anyway, so... Whatever. Yeah, if I use Yara on this room here, I should get... What would that be? That would be 8 cents, right? So... That would be pretty solid. It'd get me pretty close to the, uh, to the coin cap. Nice, nice. Also going to be loading up on these uh, half red hearts thanks to Bloody Penny, so hopefully get some more attack spiders or something out of that. And bomb these guys open as well. It's the bomb diggity, man. And I guess, uh, don't forget to go and grab an Algis rune because we're going to go fight Delirium now. Who boy. Is everyone ready for the Delirium fight? I know I am. I think, I hope. Hopefully doesn't, everything doesn't go catastrophically wrong. I don't really see how it could here. But let's uh let's find out, shall we? Alright, so just go ahead and pop algae right away. 
Then just go fucking buck wild on his candy ass, really. What else are you gonna do? Just stand right in here. He's actually like sitting on top of the sprinkler, which is pretty sweet. Hi. <laughs> I'm like that obnoxious friend who just doesn't uh, understand personal space. Hey Delirium, how's it going buddy? How's it going? Oh, I'm sorry, am I in your personal bubble? Oh, I didn't realize. I'll back off in like a minute or two here after Al just wears off. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Delirium. Look at his face. He doesn't know what's happening, dude. He's like, oh my god. This man is so powerful. He's just, he's just swapping pennies all over the place. This Alge's rune is still going strong, man. I feel like we're like maybe not even halfway through it. And Delirium is clearly more than halfway dead. Oh shit, wait, no, we are more than halfway. Oh, it just ran out, dude. All right, maybe Delirium got a hit in. Look at this guy go. Of course we have the Polaroid, so every time he take, we take a hit, we also get more invincibility. So, I mean, that's pretty solid. But it did not actually subsist throughout the entire fight. Close enough, though, honestly. Good shit, good shit. Not nearly as bad as I expected it to be. Sometimes you just get lucky with that, man. Per throw, great. Can I turn a sprinkler into something else? Nope. I got a damage upgrade for that somehow. <laughs> At any rate, I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish off this run here. That is Eden Delirium. It unlocks Eden Soul for us, which is a very interesting item. That hopefully we'll come across in the near future. For now, though, I hope you guys enjoyed that run. If you did, please leave a like and or comment down below. Let me know as much. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more as well. I post a single Isaac video every day at noon mountain time. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow for the next one. I'm going to get out of here now, though, so have yourselves a good day. This is Argon Matrix signing out. Thank you and good night.